Cliffs is starting to become a really crazy update. Have a look at this. So I'm standing on snow here and if you have a look around you can obviously see some terracotta, you can also see some sand, you can also see some ocean as well as some green sort of grassland areas and forestry areas. This is kind of like four different biomes all intersecting right where I'm standing. This is Definitely, definitely crazy. And you can probably also see the clouds. Okay, let's change out of that view. But have a look at this. How nuts is this? It's just completely insane. I love this so much. This is obviously what Mojang's been working on a little bit. And I really do like it. So for those of you guys who may have seen the channel before, I did play a map some time ago with a mod that I had loaded into Bedrock from Java and it was kind of like this where the hills weren't so much just sort of up and down as they sort of are normally in Minecraft but they were sort of like rolling hills and gradual inclines and things like that and that's kind of what they've started to play around with which I like a lot and you can definitely tell it from this I guess desert or sand dune biome. I think it's more of a sand dune because you start getting these really high peaks where it becomes actual snow. This this is just awesome. So I will of course put the seed in the uh, description, but have a look at this. It's sand, but it's also a mountain. That is very, very cool. And I love how much this sort of just emulates real life. It's not like it's something that's traditional sort of Minecraft where it's very sort of jaggedy and that sort of thing, but it's starting to become this rolling, beautiful, gorgeous sort of look to it where it's starting to be good enough that you would actually have maybe the natural world generation as your home desktop wallpaper. I mean, look at this. This is just wonderful to look at. In fact, I, I, I'm, I'm even gonna get capture an image of this. This is going to be the screenshot because how can it not be? Look at this. This is just wonderful. This is what I've wanted in Minecraft for so long because, I mean, to be honest, I've seen the natural world generation of Minecraft for a long time, a lot of, lot of years, and it is good. It will always have somewhere particular in my heart that I love, but having something like this very realistic sort of mountain and also being able to build in this environment that naturally generates is something exciting for me. This is what I like, is that it does give you this sort of sense of excitement. And I think that's what they've really done well achieving here. So we're gonna have a little bit of a look at what we can sort of find around the map and what things sort of look like. This is, of course, just an experiment so far. So 
you know, there's no guarantees this will end up in the game. This is what Mojang's just currently playing around with. But so far, I'm, I'm absolutely loving this. I haven't seen any videos on this. I wanted to give myself my own sort of first-hand experience of seeing what it was like for myself. And it's great. It, it's really, really awesome. I love it so much. I mean, have a look at this. Don't you just want to build there? I want to build there. If if it wasn't for the fact that the betas can be a little bit unstable and m maybe accidentally end up in a survival series getting accidentally wiped out, then yeah, I, I would go out and build here straight away. But ha have a look at it. So one of the big things that I really like about this, because obviously, okay, now that's that's just cool. That's even better than where I started. That is, that is very, very cool. What, what is this? What on earth is this? That, that is, I'm sorry guys, but I, I haven't seen this before. This is crazy. This kind of reminds me of that, um, Oh, what's the mode in Java that you get? The, um, ah, oh, Amplified. That's what it is. This is nuts. I love this so much. I, I want this. Please make this into the game because this is just, this is just wonderful. <laughs> How nuts is this? Okay, like, I, I'd seen a little bit of the hills, but this is very, very cool. I, I so want to build a base up here. What level does this go up to? So this is currently going up to level about 230, 240, 250. So you still got about 80 blocks to build above it. So that's still definitely more than enough height to build some decent sort of bases up this high. So you you definitely have a lot to work with. I I love this. I just love this. So Bedrock's always had a very sort of flat generation unfortunately namely because it would never actually have natural generation above the clouds whereas java would have a little bit more but this is just crazy this isn't amplified this isn't anything like that it's just basically an experiment that they're testing out and i love it so much this this is what i've i've sort of missed about java and I mean, the, there are certain things that you miss about Java, the, the wacky, crazy way that things generate like floating islands. I love those in Java. I mean, it looks like they're trying to bring in more of those floating islands, which I, I just only fully support. Floating islands in Java are one of the coolest things. And I completely support that kind of structure being in Bedrock as well. But that's... That's crazy. I hadn't seen this yet. That is definitely nuts. Let, let's have a look and see what else we can find here because this is, this is definitely very cool. So w one of the other things I was saying uh, that I was mentioning before is that this helps to fix the horse problem. So what, what is the horse problem? Well, for those of you guys out there that enjoy watching this uh, li little series that, you know, is kind of reasonably unknown. Uh, it's called Hermitcraft or something. No, I'm joking. Of course, everyone knows Hermitcraft. It's one of the biggest series in Minecraft. But if you've been watching Hermitcraft in the later series, and you would have noticed that they've started using horses. Now, that has a bit of a problem in Minecraft. You see, the problem in Minecraft is that the natural generation that you usually get doesn't support horses very well. Uh, jumping up two blocks at a time, yeah, horses can do it, but they can't do it sort of continuously very easily. And it does start to get a bit tiresome very quickly, not to mention as soon as you touch the water, you have problems. So yes, I mean, that that is a bit of a problem. That's why I support things like rolling hills. It's not just the way it looks, it also serves a massive practical use for Minecraft. You don't have to worry about jumping up everything with a horse. And that realistically brings around a lot more usefulness for horses. I, I will say that the mountains have started to have these much more gradual sort of inclines. They still have 
the obvious uh, sort of steep slopes, but it's a lot less sort of, I, I guess, unrealistic. And, <laughs> and I guess that's probably a bad word to use for Minecraft because a lot of things in this game are very unrealistic, but it, it doesn't bring this sort of beautiful sense of nature that you have in the real world. And I think they've started to bring that in a lot more and it looks good. Even this village here. So if we go down to the actual level of the village, you'll see that we do have some ridiculousness, which I do love. So th this platform here, obviously in real life, couldn't ever possibly work. But that's, that's the things I love about Minecraft is platforms like this that exist. But now they've kind of incorporated that ridiculousness into beautiful gradual slopes. So this is kind of almost in some ways, kind of like an Italian village that you'd see on the side of a hill, which does look very good. It looks much more realistic. It looks much more inviting. And it's kind of a place that you could almost set up a base because look at your view. Look, look at what you would wake up to every morning, this gorgeous mountain. I love the direction that they're going with this game. But let's check out these sand... Dunes? Let's call them sand dunes. I, I, I want to say sand dunes because it's a lot more... It's not really desert. Let, let's be honest. It's not a desert biome anymore. So I'm guessing that there's still going to be obviously the flat deserts somewhere in the world. But this seems to be more of like a sand dune area, which I, I'm very excited for. That That's a lot better than just having just continuous deserts everywhere. It makes it more interesting, more exciting. And what is this? Oh, it's another portal. Okay, cool, cool. It, it, it still does sort of work in with everything. Oh, I like that. That could be a really cool and interesting area that you could explore. But let's have a look and see what else we can find. So one of the other things I've been thinking about is how does this affect the water generation? So underneath the water, is it very much the same or is it a little bit different? That is cool. Okay, so we've kind of got like a little cove here and we've got little spooky uh, Minecraft sounds as we always do. But this is cool. I, I, I do like this. We, we get obviously some beautiful, gorgeous RTX sort of glows going on here. I do have glowing ores turned on because, guys, if, if you have the option of glowing ores, you're going to go for glowing ores. Come on. I'm only human here. Like, I just can't resist something like this, especially. Look at this. You get these wonderful little glows everywhere. So you can just see. And... Oh, glowberries look very, very cool. Glowberries look very cool in RTX. How have I not seen glowberries in RTX? I don't think this texture pack had it enabled before, maybe, or I don't know, but that looks very cool. I need to find a cave. I, I need to find a lush cave at some point in this video and see what that's like, because those glowberries look seriously awesome now. Okay, let, let's have a bit more of a browse around because let's not try and stick to one section. Let's try and expand our horizons and see what it's all sort of like and what we do and don't like and that sort of thing. So far, I, I this is probably a bad review because uh, I don't really have any negative comments from things. I, I, I kind of like everything, which, which isn't a good review. A good review needs to have some criticism. It needs to find something that could have been done better. And so far, I haven't done that. Oh, this is where we're getting different water levels. Okay, so this is the natural sort of sea level. And over here is where we're getting a sort of lower level that we would in a cave. So that makes things rather interesting. I, I, I agree with that. I reckon it's a lot more nicer. I mean, normally what you'd sometimes have is something like, say for instance, the water level, then you'd have a cave immediately straight into it, but it wouldn't make a lot of sense because obviously the cave would be filled with water if it was right next to an ocean. So that makes a lot more sense. That does make a lot more sense. I agree with that change. It looks a little bit odd, but 
I think if you came across a cave in a world that was right next to a giant ocean, it would probably be filled with water. I, 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 I agree with it. That's not too bad. Let's see though, what else we can find through here. Obviously we've got a lot more transitions and things like that between biomes. It makes it much more interesting. It makes it less sort of stagnant, like just one area to another area to another area. It's kind of like things blend in a little bit between the different biomes, which I think is probably something that they've gone for. I'd say it's deliberate because you wouldn't get that sort of blending from one thing to another just naturally occurring or by some random result of code. That's that's something that's deliberate. And what do we have over here? This is another sort of... Okay, so it sort of leads into a water cave. That's, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. I, I agree with that. That's not too bad. We, we are getting a lot more terracotta, actually, now that I think about it. So just on the other side of this village, though, we do get a bit of a sort of valley area that sort of goes down and into where the water is. That That's an interesting sort of one. And then we do have, again, some sort of unrealistic sort of views, but it's kind of like it overshadows like the valley area, which which is still nice. Uh, cave, cave is a little bit short, although it does sort of blend into the water area a little bit more. Still, still waiting, unfortunately, for, uh, you know, glow squids to be RTX enabled. And, you know, that's going to be a hard one. I, I will mention that uh, at the moment, mobs can't be enabled with RTX because, well, basically, it's probably going to stress out your graphics card quite a lot. So I don't know what they're going to do about that, whether or not it's never going to be enabled or if it's going to be something that they're going to have to work on. It, it's... I do fear that it might be fairly intensive, but this is a spawner here. <laughs> I've never seen a spawner in a location like this. And I've been playing this game for a long time. This is a strange spot for a spawner. I mean, it's right open to basically everything. So things so far have been very interesting. I will find something to critique. There'll be something that I'll say... You know, it's not 100% something that I have to find that I don't like about it. I mean, it is gorgeous, obviously. It's, it's much more gorgeous, especially with RTX. I, I wanted to use RTX, run it in Bedrock, because obviously this gives it the absolute best chance. If it doesn't look fantastic in RTX, it definitely won't look great in Java or Bedrock without RTX. So this is giving it every best possible chance. And so far, I will say in my opinion, at least, it hasn't disappointed. So we are obviously crossing from a plane into a jungle biome here. Sorry, not plane. So obviously we're crossing from a savanna into a jungle biome, which not too bad. I, I Here's the thing, I've always been afraid of jungle biomes and this is something that a lot of you Java guys would probably know more than the Bedrock guys, but jungles in Java are kind of like lag fests. Like, if you can imagine just soul-crushing amounts of bamboo that uh, cause massive amounts of lag <laughs> in Java, that that's basically what I've always feared. And obviously it works fantastic in Bedrock. Obviously it works fantastic on a... 16 core computer. My old quad core computer, not so much. It, it used to sometimes struggle a little bit because, uh, you know, I wouldn't always have Optifine available to me or something like that. So, yes, I, I always used to be afraid of jungles. I got to learn not to be afraid of them anymore, though. The other thing I've kind of noticed about this is that villages can actually be a bit more closer again. So, there used to be a time in Bedrock where villages could be very close to each other. And then they sort of spread out a little bit more, but now it's kind of looking like they can be a bit more closer. I did notice as well that there was actually a pillager uh, outpost that was right next to one of the villages, which used to be a thing as well. Um, but they got rid of it, obviously, because, uh, well, let's be honest, having pillagers right next to a village it is probably not going to end very well. 
but I, 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 I do kind of like it because it's chaotic and madness. And that, that's some of the things I do like about Bedrock is that it can be chaotic and madness. For instance, why is there a lava pit here? Well, it's Minecraft that sometimes there's lava pits. And that's okay. That's something I like is that it's just a random lava pit. You, you could walk into it by mistake or you could basically accidentally uh, lose a lot of items in something like that. But it, it's, it makes the game fun <laughs> and random. I also feel like with the randomness, it makes it easier to find things that you wouldn't normally very easily find. Like, for instance, if you did want some terracotta, you could actually grab some. Or if, for instance, there was red sand, you could grab red sand. It feels like it's a bit more easier to be able to find things as well. So that's yeah, one of those things. I mean, in Minecraft, it does take some exploring, but... There's exploring and there's traveling 6,000 blocks in some random direction to be able to just travel to the nearest biome that you need or something like that. So it does seem to actually bring in a lot more of the things that you actually need and things that you actually want to actually build with a lot more closer so that you're not having to struggle with ridiculous distances and that sort of thing. Now, the other thing that I am questioning a little bit to see whether or not they've, well, at least how much they've adapted from Java is to see how big the bodies of water are. You see, that's the other thing with Bedrock is that typically you don't get massive bodies of water. You, you don't, well, at least not the size that Java gets. I, I don't know if that's just a luck and chance thing and... I've basically just gotten unlucky continuously for the last couple of years in Bedrock, but I've never really found large bodies of water like you would Java, although this one does seem to actually be very, very large. So maybe it's just a luck thing? I'm not too sure. I'd have to look it up one day and see. I mean, I can't imagine that the world generation is going to be that much different between Bedrock and Java, that... The bodies of water are massively different, but maybe they are. Maybe I've just always sort of subconsciously known, but not really ever sort of complained about it. But yeah, yeah I've always sort of found that bodies of water in Bedrock were rather small. If you've noticed it too, let me know. Because yeah, that, that seems like something that's always sort of been a bit of a problem. What is... That, that is cool. <laughs> that is very, very cool. What on earth? <laughs> okay, well, the world is definitely not as flat anymore. That's just, I don't, I don't even think it's an actual mountain. I think it's just, maybe it is part of a mountain and it's, but it just sort of seems like it's sort of naturally generated. I, I, I want to find from the game code whether or not that's got to be part of the mountain because it's breaking the height of the actual cloud. So, but this one's not, yeah, I'm not sure how that's occurred, but it it's wonderful. I, I do love it very much and I, I do want more of it. Definitely want more. <laughs> I, I definitely wouldn't say no to it. I mean, that's just me having, having more, you know, lows and highs and things like that. I would never say no to. Wow. This has got to be the tallest village that I've ever seen in Minecraft. Have a look at this. This house is actually right at the cloud level. I don't, I don't remember ever seeing that in Minecraft unless it was an amplified map or something like that. That's, that's very, very cool. I know some people don't like the clouds. Uh, I, I kind of like clouds, but I kind of don't in some respects. So. In RTX, the clouds actually cause reflection. So if I, for instance, changed it to nighttime, let, let's just show you what I like about clouds actually, and, and you'll kind of understand it. So say for instance, we got, um, let's just grab a sea lantern and we also grab some glass and we'll do it in purple. And what we'll do is we'll just go up like this with purple. So time set midnight. What you'll notice is 
what once I'm actually having where the clouds actually are is actual reflections on the clouds. And I can even change the color of it using glass. So if I was to add enough glass, then it would actually counteract all the uh, white light that you see and it actually becomes purple. So you can start to see that it's actually purple tinged. Not, not anymore because the blasted cloud has actually moved, but you get the idea. So it is very cool. Now the downsides of clouds are obviously that if you build a big tall tower or uh, inside a mountain, the, the clouds go through the mountain or the structure or something like that. It'd be good if they got rid of that. There, there you go. That's my criticism so far I've got for this video is that it'd be good if clouds couldn't actually go straight through mountains. So there you go. That That's my criticism. So I don't mind it being around like this is that that looks perfectly fine but if I actually tunnel inside this mountain here and go down a little bit like this and let's say add some light source in fact you, you can just see it now that we've actually got clouds inside the mountain I think that's probably the problem here that there you go that's a criticism that I'll, I'll have with Minecraft in general is that uh, clouds probably shouldn't be able to go through buildings or solid objects like the actual mountains. That they there you go. That that's a genuine criticism on this video. On the other hand, though, have you seen this? <laughs> this is crazy. This is absolutely nuts. The the bit of stone here, I I do like. Don't get rid of that. That adds a little bit of character to mountains. So I I don't know what you'd sort of say. It's kind of a little bit sort of Lord of the Rings-ish where that sort of design of uh, the mountains kind of existed where you had some of the really sharp peaks did have that sort of stony sort of effect going on. And I, I, I like that. I like that a lot. But at the same time, it mostly is pretty smooth going, which is good because that's what a mountain's meant to be like. But mountains were already sort of like that and this update more or less sort of brings everything else together with the mountains so that we end up with these gradual sort of slopes into the mountains so they sort of feed into it. The, in fact, you know what, I, I think I've got a second criticism with mountains at the moment, well with generation at, as a whole, you see, as if you could have a mountain look this good, be this interesting and this amazing and not have snowboards in the game. I mean, wh where are the snowboards, Mojang? I mean, it doesn't have to be snowboard snowboards. Obviously, uh, you know, people were asking for lava boats and we got what, lava striders, which oh, I can understand. That's their own unique sort of flair and their own unique sort of design. But guys, s snowboards, H how can you have gorgeous mountains like this and not snowboards? I, 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 I couldn't imagine not snowboarding something like this. Ooh, whoa, this just gets better and better. Hey, check out this. So it's obviously a mountain, but is that one big, oh, it, it's kind of a sky island. It does have a, a little bit of a connection. I mean, that's, that's pretty, pretty fine. You know what? I, I'm just going to fix this. Let, let's just fix this. Uh, uh, just two seconds, guys. And okay, there we go. Now it's a floating island. Okay, so massive floating island that we have here. Massive, massive peaks that we have. I, I I like this a lot. This is crazy. This is bonkers. I mean, if you were to actually climb this in a survival world and go all the way up here, is that a berry bush? It is a berry bush. Wow, that's one determined berry bush. But if you actually got all the way up here, look at the village down there. That's crazy. <laughs> I, I like this a lot. This feels like massive, massive peaks. This is the sort of grandiose and sort of overwhelming size that I really wanted from mountains. And uh, you do get that, but they're more sort of wide and you don't get this sort of just straight up effect as well. That's kind of what I want is sloping slopes, but also crazy structures like that or you know, sharp points and things like that. A more sort of diverse world. 
Okay, this this video is not meant to be political. Don't go reading anything into that. It, it's just basically saying more diversity in Minecraft world generation is better because it, it makes things different, unique, strange, weird, wonderful, gorgeous, beautiful. And we get things like this where there's this nice little hill and next to that hill that we have that just gradually steeps up towards the sky and is surrounded by nice shimmering lakes is a little village and that little village is filled with villages Un unlike prior to the uh changes that they've been doing recently this village probably would have actually been just one of the abandoned ones and i do like that they've changed that as well that these villages are no longer just you know tombs e every single one of them well not every single one but it it seemed like in bedrock you had like 80 percent of the villages were just tombs they, they were just abandoned they were filled up with villages that had been attacked by zombies it it was just a nightmare whereas now we actually have living villages and it's wonderful it's great and hey check it out another mountain another massive mountain oh wow check out this so we've actually got a village over here as well that's also going up the side of the mountain i definitely like these as well don't get rid of them because these are fantastic and we've got kind of like a cliff edge that goes along here and oh is that is that a cave that's actually inside the mountain it is too that is awesome so this is a cave that's just sort of come outside the mountain Obviously you can see inside because obviously there is the lava, but not only that, we've got enough RTX light that's actually shining through to bring us the sort of glory and gorgeousness of this cave. This is cool. This is very cool. This this uh, sort of pike that we have here is, well, sort of like a stalactite that we have here is very much in with the whole design of the cave biomes and things like that. And what? Oh, okay. So... It sort of goes off into its own little cave and that sort of thing winds its way down and around i do like this okay so it looks like we're also heading towards a bit of a snowy biome which that's going to be interesting as well okay so it even goes into this is just getting bigger and bigger this is great this is just wonderful i've missed this i absolutely have i mean look at this we've got Obviously a bit of a hill and mountains over there, but this is a massive hill and a massive mountain. <laughs> this is great. You see, I think part of the problem is, is that a lot of Bedrock users don't really know what they're sort of missing out on part of the time. So having come from Java and knowing things that have been a bit like this, I mean, obviously not really to that scale, but that scale is awesome. But having things like this now going into bed... Hang on. Hang on. This is... This is the first time in a non-amplified world that I've had villages above the clouds. This is very cool. That, that means that this is the very first mountain village that I have ever seen in Minecraft. How awesome is this? And it's not abandoned. It's still got all the village there. There's absolutely no way that these guys could ever <laughs> reach these guys. But that's okay. That's okay. I'm I'm not complaining about it. That's that's absolutely fine. It's just awesome that there's actually a village above the clouds. Because why wouldn't villages build above the clouds if that's the safest place? Why not build there? I mean, that just seems logical. Aha. I was wondering when I would come across one of these. So what should happen is from here, if we mine down a little bit, we should hopefully come across a lush cave. So with the new RTX enabled textures on those glow berries, I'm kind of wondering what these caves look like. I, I, I might stop flying because that's just gonna ruin some of the mystic and magical effects that we do get and if you bear with me for a few moments this shouldn't take too long 
and eventually we should reach, hopefully, uh, uh, eventually, oh, redstone, cool, <laughs> it really comes out of nowhere, hey guys, <laughs> maybe I've dug down in the wrong spot, it is entirely possible that I, I may be, well, no, I'm, I'm definitely in the right spot, okay, well, what do we think of this? The glow berries are very, very cool. I love glow berries now. They, they, they are just awesome. How can you not love them? Okay, there's a lot of creepers down here. Ooh, with the glowing ores, this does look pretty, pretty cool. And the berries, the berries look very, very cool. I, I, I'm very glad that they actually added those to the game. They, they do certainly make things a lot more magical. Should the ores be glowing? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, it does make it easier to find and it does bring this sort of magical sort of feeling to ores. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep the glowing ores because it does make them feel a lot more special and a lot more magical. But the glow berries, they should definitely have always glowed. I mean, it does take time for people to update stuff, and th this is not like a genuine pack or something, so it takes people time to do things and adjust to different stuff, so that I can understand. I mean, I, I, I don't get around to everything immediately myself anyway, so it is what it is, guys. <laughs> but I definitely do like these lush caves quite a lot now. You know what? Every time I move away from something big and something massive, I think, okay, I've, I've adjusted to it. I'm used to it now. Everything's the same. From this point on, I, I won't be impressed. But every time I find something new that is magnificent and something massive and something unexpected, like a goat on a floating island or this massive plimp that's rising out of the ground with all the, uh, <laughs> with all the valleys just down below it, it's spectacular. And not only that, but you can actually use these kind of things in the world as points of navigation. So if you were flying or if you're even just walking, then you would notice something like this in the world. You, you wouldn't have to nerd pole up 600 miles so that you could, you know, put some sort of random pole in the middle of nowhere just to be able to navigate from place to place without a map. You could actually find your way through the world of Minecraft using things that you can recognize. Oh, geez, check out this. This is cool. It, it kind of forms its own castle. One of the things I was thinking about recommending is that, you know, we, we have more kind of like ruins and things like that along the world. So maybe for instance, a ruin of a mega base or something like that, but this kind of is it when you think about it in some ways. So something like this almost looks like it is sort of a castle of sorts and a massive, massive mega structure. I mean, it's so good. I'm taking a photo of it. How can you not? It's just the most unique and strangest thing to come across. You, you wouldn't miss that for miles. I love this so much. I, I need to think of things to criticize. Otherwise, it's not a good review. <laughs> but I'm struggling. I'm honestly struggling at this point as to what I could say that I don't like. M maybe I don't like that it's not already in the game. Although that doesn't really work. I mean, you could say that about any update, really. The ice areas seem to be relatively unaffected by any of these changes, although that sort of makes sense given that, first of all, well, they're pretty much based on actually being, you know, at sea level. And second, well, y you wouldn't really notice very high peaks if you didn't have very low lows. So, for instance, you know, wh what's for the good times if it's not the bad ones to compare them to? So I, I can see why this is low and the, these need to be low in the world because we need to have certain things. It, hang on. Hang on. First of all, first of all, 
Is this a ship? It is too. I've have have these always been in the game, or is this something new? Because I've never once seen a ship above the water in ice. Is that something new? I mean, <laughs> has anyone ever seen that, or is it just something really rare to see? I've seen them above the land, or I've seen them above the water, but not in the middle of an ice field, and definitely not partway through ice. That is cool. But I've also noticed just over here that they do actually have a bit more sort of mountainous sort of features. It doesn't seem to be as common, but it does occasionally sort of happen. And I kind of like that too. I, 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 I really do like it. it. It's not quite like the ice shards area, but it works. And I think it works pretty well. In fact, this is a very large ice biome. I've, I can't remember ever seeing one this size. I've been traveling for some period of time. Uh, I, I will say one other thing. The, um, the trees, the, they definitely stand out a bit and you can sort of tell where this lush cave is by the trees because you, you've got one there, 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 there, and there by the looks of it, and there. And I found another boat above the ground. That's... How am I finding this many boats? Okay, let's see what this cave is like. Because this has got to be a big cave here, right? Whoop. Oh. How pretty is that? How is there ice down here? I didn't know that lush caves could... Oh, okay, get rid of the... Get rid of that thing. That, that is just, oh, okay, I love Lush Caves a lot more now. Lush Caves are very, very cool. How have I not seen this so far? Oh, wow, this is just special. It's just very, very special. If you told me 10 years ago, this is the kind of thing that you'd be looking at in Minecraft, I don't think I'd believe you. I, I think that it'd just be some sort of doctored photo or some sort of weird mod, but this is, this is something very special. It, it's kind of taken a game that's been very special for a lot of people and made it even more. And I, I don't, I don't think that I would have thought that that would be possible. But have a look at this. You, you just see it everywhere. And the glowberries, they make so much sense now. I I, I mean, I, I wasn't sort of against them. I'm always up for new kind of light blocks and things like that. But this makes sense. So much sense. You know what? I... I I, I'm kind of getting a bit speechless and a, a little bit emotional. Even the boats, the boats being above the actual ground in the snow biomes make a lot of sense when you think about it. Because if you think about it, the snow biomes, well, any biome, I guess, really, could have been actually submerged under the water at some point. And at that point, if they had become shipwrecked, well, it would mean that this is actually a section that would have been underneath the water originally. So the shipwrecks make a lot of sense. And it, it kind of looks like there's been a battle between a few different ships at some point here. And then basically the tide's gone down. And then suddenly it's sort of just left these wounded, broken ships in the middle of nowhere. We've got this portal here that... You know, may maybe someone was trying to at some point, you know, go from a village to a portal to rescue people or who knows what. But it feels like there's a storyline behind here. I mean, what that storyline is, is basically up to the player. It's always been up to the player. That's that's Minecraft for you. It doesn't always give you the storyline. It sometimes basically tells you to 
see what you can come up with. But I, I do agree with it. It does feel like this is a world that has been lived in and that things have changed and that basically you've got to come up with what the storyline is. I have, however, if if you hold your round of applause for me, found one thing to criticize and that is that there's vines on the side of ice. I don't know if I agree with it. I mean, it's, what is that sound? Where is that coming from? What's the deal? Oh, right. Uh huh. That was unexpected. That's very unexpected. I thought it was Guardians, and obviously it was, but have you ever seen an ocean monument underneath the ice? That's a new one. That's definitely a new one. That didn't happen before. That's definitely a cool change. I I, I like that. It, it I mean it makes sense. But that that's very unexpected. <laughs> wow. Okay, um I I mean I might have to end the episode here just because well basically like there's so much still to explore and to see what's sort of different, but there's so many things that I just keep on coming across that are unexpected and eventually I have to edit this video and get it out. But it's an ocean monument under the ice. I've never seen that. That's definitely not ever been a part of Minecraft. Where's it going? It was here. There it is. Yeah, ocean monuments underneath the ice. I mean, sure, you'd have like maybe an iceberg or something like that above it or next to it or something like that. But to be completely submerged underneath the ice? That's something new. I like it. I like it a lot. But yeah, I, I, I got to end the episode here, guys, because I got to obviously get the video out. But I hope you have had fun and yeah, this is definitely something that I've really, really enjoyed so far. I, 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 I will say that my only real criticism is of course the, the vines on the side of the, uh, ice don't, don't really make a lot of sense. The, um, lack of snowboards is worrisome. M Mojang, what are you doing? Like no snowboards? What? That just seems crazy. But everything else, everything else is truly spectacular. It, it feels like everything's been sort of fine-tuned to be realistic and harsh, but also inviting. And that's what Minecraft should be, is a world that invites you to create things, that inspires you to create things, and a world that gives you just that little bit of fear. Till the next one, guys. I'll catch you later. Bye.